Egregore of Magic. Hello, Ksenia Evgenievna. Hello. When I read one of your articles in the library, I was surprised to learn that there is the Egregore of Magic. I always thought that an egregore only covered a limited area of this world, a certain religion, a certain state, a certain organization, a certain family. Could you resolve this apparent contradiction? As usual, to understand what we're talking about, let's start with the terminology and find out what an egregore is. An egregore is an energy informational structure. In fact, it's a very large global program. It's not alive. And it's done magically. An egregore consists of several different components. And at its center is the core. The idea of what an egregore exists for is built into the core. The body of the system, the body of an egregore, forms around the idea like a piece of sand forms around a pearl. This layer contains the main goals and objectives of how an egregore will implement the idea. On top of that there is another layer, called the living space of an egregore. This is where all the tools that an egregore rightfully owns are embedded. And on top of that, like the shell of a pearl, is the outer layer. It is the dead space of an egregore, where the enemies and the tools of defense are embedded. Every egregorial system is built on this principle. It is a program. A program built by someone and for something. In high-level egregores, this program is embedded in the core of an idea related to the idea of God, which is a very high mind, a very high level of consciousness. Egregores at lower levels of the hierarchy are already derivatives of higher egregores. They are, so to speak, a secondary idea of a global idea, which has not ceased to be a more or less artificial formation compared to the original one. Egregorial structures themselves exist in a strict hierarchical system in which each higher level includes, controls, and feeds on all lower levels. At the lowest level of this hierarchical system is man with his simple consciousness. Just above man are the formations closest to him, the egregores of family and kin. Above the egregores of family and kin, there is another egregorial level, the spontaneous egregores, the spontaneous egregores are stronger than the egregores of kin and family, but they are characterized by their short-lived nature. These are the egregores of a fashion, of a particular community of people, for example, your work, which brings people together for a certain period of time and for a certain task. Higher up in the hierarchy is the level of professional egregores. This egregorial level is longer in time, it can exist for a longer period of time than a human generation, because it already contains the factor of succession. It has its own rules of functioning which include all of the following. It is considered that the professional egregorial level is able to control the level of the spontaneous egregores, the egregores of family and kin and, of course, to make a human personality dependent on its functioning. Above the level of professional egregores in the hierarchy is the level of social formations, such as social institutions and financial institutions. These are formations that exist as if by themselves. For example, there is the profession of a doctor, the professional level of doctors, there is the egregore of medicine, and the egregore of medicine is hierarchically higher than the medical profession. 
because this idea is much more global. It includes medical business, hygiene, some finance and management. It includes a lot of things, which generally means it's hierarchically higher. And above the social and financial institutions there is the level of government egregores, which already owns and controls many financial institutions, respectively making them dependent on its functioning. It sets the rules for the functioning of these institutions, diminishing some and elevating others. And above the level of government egregores is the level of religious egregores. Religion is above the state, although things are beginning to change dramatically now. Because for a very long time, when this whole system was functioning, working, and fully flourishing, people lived in purely religious states. And if you think that the state called the Soviet Union was purely atheistic and completely irreligious, I will disappoint you and say that communism is a religion like any other, with three prophets and so on and so forth. Above religion are the gods. They are non-human minds, and they can be called living only conditionally, because they are minds of a different kind, they are eternal. And these eternal minds are capable of creating religion as teaching. Some of the gods create teachings, and some of them do not. Some gods create the state and manifest themselves through the state and through religions. Some gods have a focus on the creation of professional egregores and are so-called patrons of professions. While some gods include a level of kin and family in their scope of interest. You'll find more information in the textbook of the Power of the Bloodline course, as well as the textbooks of the fifth and sixth main courses. If you are interested in the system of egregorial hierarchy, I refer you specifically to these works of my authorship. But getting back to your question, Let's talk about the egregore of magic. What is the place of this egregore in this hierarchy? Of course, there is no place for it, because when we talk about an egregore, we are talking about an artificial program designed to perform a certain function. Magic is a comprehensive power, you can't put it into an egregore, but you can put knowledge about it into an egregore. And of course, when we use such a term as an egregore of magic, we mean an egregore of the knowledge, the teachings, the cult of magic. And if we look again at the hierarchical system, we see that the egregore of magic manifests itself exclusively at the level of spontaneous egregores. Because there are no professional mages among the people in this world. They need to come together as a community of some kind. This community can form an order, and the order forms a kind of teaching. But such a teaching wants to become a religion, and in this order there are and can be people of completely different professions. But an order is an organization, and an organization is always on a spontaneous level. So you won't find the egregore of magic at the professional level, but you will find as many as you want at the spontaneous level. But there is the idea of magic, the very essence of it. And in certain levels of religion and certain levels of the gods, we can find this very essence. But, of course, we cannot call all of this a complete egregore. Magic can project itself into a certain egregore, but if we look more closely, we can see this projection in everything, in every egregorial system, even the smallest stupid and worthless one. So when we use the term egregore of magic, we are talking about a kind of projection, 
a kind of emerging or formed cult that wants to gather all the information about all the magical disciplines that have been, are, and will be in this human world. When this knowledge is collected, and the minds that carry this knowledge are developed, then this spontaneous egregore will have the opportunity to rise to the level of professionalism. And that's when the profession of a mage will take shape, and everyone will understand what this profession means. No one will have to explain the difference between a mage, a sorcerer, a healer, and a clairvoyant. When the egregore is formed enough to become professional and rise from the level of spontaneous to professional, it will manifest its information in such a way that it appears in every mind, and everybody will just have that understanding. Just as we now know exactly the difference between, let's say, a surgeon and a proctologist, or a paramedic and a doctor of medicine, this understanding will appear in every mind because it will become natural. No one will confuse a mage with a sorcerer or a clairvoyant with a healer because this difference will be absolutely obvious to everyone, like the difference between a man and a woman, or between a dog and a cat. That's when the professional egregore of mages will be formed, but even then it won't be the egregore of magic. When this egregore becomes even stronger, when its power grows and continues for a period longer than one or more human lifetimes, when magical knowledge begins to be passed down through heredity, when it is passed down from father to son, from mother to daughter, and when at least three generations of ancestors accept this ancestral gift and clear rules of transmission are formed, then this egregore, the egregore of the profession, goes to the level of institutions. And then an institute is formed, that is, not a teaching institute, but a set of rules that can exist independently, such as law, jurisprudence, or military science, which include a vast number of professions, but all work for a certain idea in one way or another. And then when that becomes formed, the egregore goes to the level of government. But it is not yet an egregore of magic, it may be an egregore of magocracy as the power of mages, but it is not yet the egregore of magic. Perhaps higher up, at the level of religions, it will become egregore. Perhaps, but it would still be teaching. It may be very similar to the one that emerges at the spontaneous level, where we began our research. Very similar, except that at the spontaneous level, it takes less time and is more of a game in nature, they joined the order together, had a good time, dissolved the order, and nothing really changed. And on the level of religions, things are much more serious. Religion lives a long time, religion gives not only moral and ethical norms, it gives you the foundations of being, the foundations of the worldview. And if it's a magical worldview, it's clearly not a technological one, and it involves a slightly different approach, there's something else, something unscientific in it. This worldview may already be an egregore of the teachings of magic, but not yet an egregore of magic. Then maybe it will become an egregore higher up, on the level of gods, but gods are personified minds. Each of them has their own goals, their own tasks, and their own specialization. We could talk about one God, but we won't, not today. 
It means that at this level we can find the mind of gods. But for magic itself we have to go even higher, somewhere beyond the absolute, where the word egregore ceases to exist at all, and there we will find what we are looking for. By the way, when all these evolutionary paths are passed naturally, our world would become magical. But if we take this scheme as a basis, we are still only at the spontaneous level. However, things are changing now. And we have a chance to get to that result more quickly. So to finish answering your question, colleague, I will say that this contradiction is purely linguistic. When we say egregore of magic, we mean a spontaneous egregore of some magical knowledge, rituals, and the process of accumulating knowledge in this world, but nothing more. Because, as you have pointed out very well, an egregore must have a clear, specific function. What function does the egregore of magic fulfill here? If there is no function, then there is no egregore. If this function cannot be recognized, then the egregore cannot be recognized either. So when we talk about the egregore of magic, we are talking about the fact that there is some kind of egregorial system that would like to go all the way down this path of evolution, and we are all working for it in every way possible, recognizing that this path is a long one and that we will most likely not see the end of its journey in this reality. But we have to start somewhere. That is why different schools, cults, orders and teachings are formed, books and chronicles are written, books of shadows are collected, that is, everyone writes their knowledge into this egregorial system as best they can. And the more we do this, the more likely magic will reach the professional level in our lifetime. And that's when we begin to shape the profession. The actual profession of the mage, which no living person will ever confuse with clairvoyants, sorcerers, or healers.